Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. We're trying something new today. This is our next session uh, and part 17 of Pairs Driving. We are going to try to move the horses with the butt ropes. And we're going to try to go backwards this time. The butt ropes were really designed for backwards movement because Doc Hamill often found that, that their horses' hips separated when the horses went backwards. So I have a butt rope on, but I have it on in such a way that we should be able to get it off easily. Kyle, can you point? We, and Ever, can you zoom in? It's a little key ring. We've got this butt rope connected to a key ring on both collars on the outside. We've got it going under their tails through dog collars, which you can't see, but we use dog collars a lot here in the back so that the butt rope won't fall down. I've got extra butt rope here, which um, in case they separate more than I want so that uh, we'll have time to get the butt rope off in case they spook, we're going to give them more space between their hips. And what we're going to try to do now is, ever can you see both the front and the back? Okay, my cameraman's going to come up here very quietly and quiet walking and talk to the horses. They're both looking real calm. And you guys, if we have to pull that off the key ring, that's what we're going to do as fast as we can. Even if the key ring opens, that's the whole idea. Okay, Everett, you just start lifting up. Not too slow, but not suddenly. Good, good. We're not going to connect. We're just going to ask each horse to step backwards a couple steps. Okay, so use... Use a little tug. Kyle, Eve should step backwards. Fine. We don't know about Sadie. Back, back, back. Whoa. Okay, go down, Everett. Okay, they did separate. They're uh, parallel, but separate more than I want. Uh, Katie, did you feel that uh, e is Sadie was spooky? about to be spooky and that's why i said couple steps back let's see how it works and now we've done this before but not with the butt rope on we're going to pick it up again everett and see if we can go a couple steps forward now i am having a little bit of tension on the butt ropes so they are feeling it on the outside upper legs because that's the whole idea of the buck butt rope Eventually, they'll feel the butt rope, according to Doc Hamill, and say, oh, that's my boundary, uh, not to move my hips apart. And that's what we want. But at this point, it might be spooky to feel that. So we're being real careful to sack them out to that feeling. Okay, now they're pretty far apart. We're going to try to keep them from going any farther apart. Sadie's looking at me. She's saying, hey, okay, get to it, Mom. Okay, Everett, come on up. And up. And let's go forward. Three steps. Step up. Step up. Whoa. Whoa. And let's go down, Everett. Okay. Let's remove the butt rope. Whoa. Okay. Sadie's being a little bit naughty. Remove the butt rope clasp from the key ring. Got it? Okay, now I'm going to take it off of Sadie first because she's our usually our concern. Means I have to thread it through this dog collar and the back of the hip of the britchen. Everett, can you go back to the camera and when I point to the back of the britchen over there, uh, zoom in on it. According to Doc Hamill, it's quite important to connect to the collar or the halter and then come through this back strap of the britchen around under the tails and then the same on the other side but i don't like the idea of not having some kind of holder under the tails because i don't want this butt rope to go too far up or too far down i'm uh have experience roping and if a horse gets something stuck under the tail up here where the tail connects to the hip they can get pretty spooky 
They can clamp down, it can be the, a potential wreck. So I put this extra uh, dog collar here, easy to put on, easy to thread through, inexpensive, it's just a nylon dog collar. All right, and now I'm gonna take it out from the back strap of the britchen. Yeah, and I'm gonna say that uh, our, our first session of using the butt rope with the training harness pole, trying to go backwards, was successful. Tiny step, but successful. Our next session, we've got the butt rope on. We've got the harness pole ready. We've got a team of four. We're just gonna pick up the harness pole without showing fear or hesitancy. If the horses are behaving okay, we're gonna step a few steps forward. And if they continue to behave okay, we're probably gonna go to the hard direction. Because Eve is the faster walker. Uh, Angela will ask Sadie to haw. Everett and I will take the harness pole in the haw direction. Uh, all of this based on every single moment of looking at body language, getting a sense of whether or not the horses understand what is the correct answer, whether or not they're feeling this butt rope, which is properly placed as a boundary so that their hips don't separate. And, uh, and then we'll decide what is the next step. Mostly now it's will they accept the boundary of the butt rope Will they allow us to move forward? We're a few steps back from the wall. Uh, and as we get closer, if we've moved forward a couple of steps and they're doing well, we'll go off to the left a little bit, just to change pattern, to make them think, not be reactive, and head towards being able to pull with our harness pole in the G and Ha direction, with or without a butt rope. Right now, the butt rope is a training tool. Okay, Everett, on uh, three, you'll go up, I'll go up. I've got the butt rope kind of taut with my left hand. Okay, one, two, three, up. Step forward, step up, step up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, ah, ah. No, Everett, not loud. Don't drop. If you can help it. That's what I was afraid of. Okay, Evie, who's cooking now? All right. All right. You get the thing. The, the thing right. is tangled up. Okay. That rope is tangled up. It's all righty. It's all righty. It's all right. Oh, now. Oh, now. Oh, now. Oh, now. Oh, now. Oh, a little differently next time. This class got caught in one of the dog collars, so instead of falling off, it ran after Eve, and she's not a freaky horse, but any horse will freak when something's running after it. It's in their nature. Sadie did quite well, but I think she's the reason, yeah, she's the reason the butt rope didn't work because uh, she started her, can you come closer, Angela? She started pulling her hip out. Right? Can you come close to the camera and tell us what you perceived at the head of Sadie? Well, when we asked for a woe, she didn't woe. Uh -huh. She continued and I tried to get her to stop. But uh -huh. Her hip came out after that. Okay, and her hip came out at the stop. Okay, we need to get Sadie to woe in a straight line. We were doing it with a trot, remember? We were doing okay. Yep. And then it got rainy and we didn't practice. And I thought, oh, maybe we'll be okay with the butt rope. But you know what? I don't think the butt rope boundary is what's gonna work with Sadie. What's gonna work is her understanding what is the right answer and uh, removing the pressure when she gives it to us. And then uh, and then she'll understand that if, if I keep parallel with my pair of horse, uh, I don't get any pressure. I just have to move forward or backward or G and ha. 
So it may be many a session after this one, but that's the direction we're going. We're going to stop using the butt rope at this time. A postscript, Everett um, doesn't have a lot of experience around horses, and he saw Sadie starting to get agitated, so he dropped the harness pole. He pointed out to me he would have been less likely to do that for his own safety had he had some kind of a rope or chain to hold on to from a distance, see, like this. Then he could have said, okay, she's spooking. I'm just going to leave it down and uh, take my rope with me without making the noise. And you see how Angela is practicing with Sadie? We're going to do a whole lot of that, weather permitting. And even if the weather doesn't permit, we'll do it undercover. We get her attention by asking her to trot. We use visual blocks. Yes, with the verbal command. And then, as a last resort, the little tug on the halter. And that's a Monty Roberts halter. Yeah, we have the, oh, you didn't have it on the side. No. Ah, that would have helped too. The Monty Roberts halter is, is um, designed to give you some pressure across the nose that if you do tug, they'll feel it across the nose. So, uh, okay, I can only say that uh, we made these mistakes today because it's been a while. And uh, luckily though, we had a team of four that got us out of a potentially dangerous situation. So what we in fact did was we prevented a wreck. Oh. Another postscript. I realized that that uh, butt rope came off of Sadie's, of Eve's collar but uh, we hadn't found the little key ring that pulled apart as I thought it would and should. And I said to myself, if that ends up in their bellies or their intestines, it's deadly. So I looked around for a while. It looked like I was doing, uh, looking for a needle in a haystack and I found it. It was open like this. And I'm really glad I found it. So I took the other one off that we didn't have to release with uh, pressure. And I said to myself, and I'm saying to you, we're going to figure out if we ever want to use the butt rope again, a better way to quick release it from the collar, from the britchin, and from under the tail. Because uh, if a horse does misbehave and feels that pressure and doesn't understand it, that's when you can get in trouble. And it's another possibility for a wreck. We're having a follow-up session here the very next day because even though we were able to prevent a wreck yesterday, I was afraid that uh, some bad thoughts would stay in my, uh, my two Morgan mirror minds, uh, Eve and Sadie. And in fact, Evie is a little bit more uh, jumpy today. And Eve is my most steadfast of horses, but uh, if you'll review the last few minutes of the last session, the uh, rope got caught on her back leg and we got it off. I have a very exciting news though, we're going to go to a pet store uh, in the next day or two, and we're going to get uh, breakaway cat collars. And instead of using these dog collars, which don't have the breakaway feature, well, wherever there's a dog collar, we'll have a cat collar instead that if it gets uh, tugged on by, let's say, a butt rope or for any other reason, it will break away, and they're designed for cats. I just found out about that this morning from Everett. And I checked the internet, and in fact, they are available. Now, Eve is harnessed up. Sadie's harnessed up. We've got the Monty Roberts Dooley halter on, and we've got the lead line attached to the outside ring so that if we do need to get a little bit more pressure on Sadie's nose to make our request more clear, um, we'll have the help of the Monty Roberts. Uh, Kyle is going to go get Eve and bring her right up here to the training harness pole. We're not using the butt rope today for the reasons that I explained last time. But we are using a couple extra dog leashes that will help us to lift the training harness pole. However, ever, you'll still have to hold on to it, otherwise it's going to topple. But if we need to put it down fast, we can probably do it with less noise. Uh, last time ever, uh, felt unsafe with uh, Sadie uh, spooking like she did, and I don't blame him, so he kind of dropped it. And that only added to Sadie's conviction that something was dangerous around her. You have to realize the way the horse sees the world. 
they get scared about something and then if something uh, immediately follows up that scares them even more, then they just become more sure that they're scared and need to move, um, run, uh, kick, uh, buck, whatever it is, uh, even rear, that they do when they get scared. So here come my two horses. We're putting uh, Sadie on this side this time, only because we like to change the pattern. Ah, see, Eve is a little bit standoffish. Well, I hope we're going to be able to back that up and get rid of that. I hope we're going to be able to erase that bad experience. I think we will, knowing Eve the way I do. I have two arm extensions in my hand. Uh, I may hand one to Everett or Kyle. We'll see. Arm extensions for visual blocks are extremely important. Even just your arm, your hand, which I showed in my last session, at the end of my last session, to get uh, Eve's attention, I just put my hands up. And that got her focus, and we were able to get the butt rope, which was attached with a twist to the old dog collar, and uh, get it off so that we could uh, remove it from her leg. It was tied once around, I believe, only to her leg. Whoa, good girls. Now let them think about it. Look, their body languages are good. Now if Sadie starts to step forward, then uh, we're going to, with uh, assertion, ask for a hoe, and then a, 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 a tug with the Monty Roberts, and then as a, a helpful, if you're not getting the answer, you're going to put the arm extension in front of her face. Now, if she is going off to the right, a better way to deal with that, rather than to let her go off to the right, is to ask her for a back. If you can get their focus in asking them for a back, you're, you're much more likely to keep their focus and to get their respect and to get the right answer. And then as soon as you get the right answer, you remove the pressure. And that's the way they learn. Stopping, stopping square, stopping straight uh, is a very important request to be able to accomplish, and we're going to continue to practice that every way we know how. Okay, so Everett, if you can uh, come up to the front, if you can just hold on to this in case I say, yes, it would be appropriate to do visual block. I'm going to the back. I just wrapped my dog leash around the back. Again, it's just going to be like an extension of the harness pole if we have to put it down quickly in case the horses are uh, acting up, kicking up, whatever. And uh, we're going to try to put the harness, harness pole down quietly. OK, I'm going to, on three, just in case I say, you need to put something in front of her face. That'll get her attention, like this. Yeah, you might. Now, Everett doesn't know much about training, but he's learning as we go, and I'm trying to keep things as safe as I can for everybody. So I gave him an arm ex uh, a lightweight arm extension. It's just my buggy whip. Okay, so I'm going to ask on three, not too slow, not too fast. Up, one, two, three. Good. Good. Let's let them think about it for a minute, for three seconds. They're okay. The arm extensions make it a little bit difficult to hold on to things, but I kind of think, based on what happened yesterday, we need to have them in our hands. Okay, now, now, Angela, the challenge is going to be, and maybe even with Eve, to step three steps forward and whoa them. Okay, let's go uh, on three. One, two, three. Step, step up. up. Step up. And whoa. Okay, now look at those hips. Let's put it down, Everett, quietly. It's all right. Now this time even Eve's hip came out. So yes, we do have a little bit of residual spook reaction to what happened yesterday. So that's why I wanted to do it right away. I wanted to try to erase the bad memory and 
make a plan for how are we going to get these horses to trust us and not be afraid of this harness pole. Okay, now if Eva's going off to the left, try to stop her and back her. She'll pay attention. Okay, go ahead and come on back in. Now even Eva's getting freaked when they touch the pole. It's okay, we're teaching ourselves, we're teaching you. We're using every single training device technique that I know about to do something that I would love to do, farm with these two horses and pairs driving. But you know, there's nobody around here <laughs> that does it. So I'm learning as best I can by watching RFD TV and my DVDs from Doc Hamill. Doc Hamill uses the butt rope, but you know, it's kind of, I think he uses it as a boundary for horses that already accept the fact that their butts are to stay together. It's a boundary, a reminder pressure, stay together. And uh, I, he hasn't shown any kind of spooking that resulted from it, but uh, maybe he never used it at the stage of training that I'm training my two mares in now. And you uh, saw in our last session uh, that we did have a potential wreck. Good, all right. You know what we're gonna do this time? They think we're gonna go forward so they can bring their hips out. We'll ask them to go backward, two steps. And if they don't bring their hips out, well, we'll stop. We'll remove the pressure. We'll let them go rest and graze. And we'll keep doing this over and over and over again until we have their trust and we have mutual confidence, the horses with us. Okay, on three, one, two, three, up. Okay, we're gonna ask for a back, two steps back. You, go ahead. Arm extension if you need it. Okay, stop. Down, quietly down. Well, at first, after two steps, their hips were together. But then when Sadie saw it go down, she said, uh-oh, I better swing my hip out. Distrust, no confidence. So go back into position, you guys. Uh, we'll do one step back this time. See if we can get it down with, uh, with very little noise of any. And then uh, call that our moment of resolution. That's what we're looking for. A moment of resolution to end this session and have some confidence, some hope that we'll be able to improve each and every session. I'm gonna get in position already. Got to come back in. <laughs> Got to come back in. If we don't start straight, we can't expect to become straight. This time I'm going to uh, stand off on this side and try to help Sadie understand to stay close to Eve. And Everett, maybe you can do that on Eve's side and just mimic what I do. I'm just Steady. saying, here, I'm a wall. Steady. Whoa. Whoa. Just arms out. Good. Uh-oh. Got to come back in. D no, you're, you're fine. Don't go all the way out with you. Just come on in. And as you come in, a little tug to get her focus. That's it. Good. Everett's the wall. Whoa. Okay, this time we got the wall. Okay, on three, one, two, three, up. Good. Back, one step. Back. 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 Down. Okay, Eve did well. Sadie's still saying, I'm getting out of here, so I'm not gonna allow that if I can help it. Go, you hold on. I'm gonna ask her to go over, and you keep her back. Back. Over, over. Over, back. 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 back, back, over, better, better. Certainly not close enough to even begin to connect the harness pole to the collars, but at least she's standing straight 
with Eve and she's licking her lips. Let me show you what I mean. That's a really good sign that she's saying, okay, I'm not afraid. I'm gonna lick my lips. And her head is down, her ears are back. She's got four feet in concrete. The two horses are parallel. And so we're gonna call that our moment of resolution. Uh, our session today is to talk about how we're gonna do it next week. We've got collars that are cat collars that look just like dog collars, but you know what? They're designed to, watch this, quick release. So wherever we have a dog collar on these harnesses, uh, we're instead gonna replace them with cat collars that quick release. We're gonna be careful too, because remember we almost had a wreck, not to use latches or clasps like this. These are scissor clasps, good for some applications in uh, the equine and bovine world, but not good for harness work because this clasp got caught in a twisted dog collar that wasn't quick releasing it. Um, another thing is I was not careful when I made this knot on this butt rope. On the other end, I had had uh, the proper hardware installed so that the end of the rope was flat and smooth and not sticking out. Another thing that could easily get caught on a dog collar or a carabiner. Now this kind of uh, clasp is better to use than this kind because it's not as obtrusive, doesn't have this lever, but still it can fall down like that and get caught. As long as the dog collar or the cat collar will quick release, we're gonna be safe. We're gonna, what we're gonna do, Everett, can you put it, uh, make a collar out of it, uh, let's see, around uh, this one. Let's put it here. Now, when we, uh, when we do this for real, we're gonna test it right on the horse, but if I pull on this butt rope, ah, perfect, it quick released. So yeah, we're gonna get a bunch of these at the local um, dog supply and cat supply store. Another kind of clasp that, uh, that Doc, uh, Doug Hamill, Doc Hamill talks about is this kind of clasp. It's very strong. Uh, you just close it on thread and then there's nothing to get stuck in it because there's no place that anything can slip in. My problem is when I use these, sometimes months later, something, get, uh, the threads get messed up. So you can use these, but I would use uh, some kind of WD-40 on a regular maintenance basis to make sure that it's not a pain in the neck to open and close. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.